All right, guys, so we got an online preview from Empire Magazine of Spider-Man No Way Home with two new images. So we're going to be looking over those and talking a little bit about the article. And just a reminder, these videos are made possible by my supporters on this platform. So if you do want to support me, be sure to hit that big beautiful subscribe button and be sure to check out the patron link in the description below the article includes interviews with kevin feige john watts and tom holland and they kind of talk about the process of making that multiverse story work and how tom holland didn't originally think that they could ever get back actors like Alfred Molina, who appears to be very much the focus of kind of what they're talking about here is Alfred Molina's Doc Ock in this universe, more so than it seems to be the other characters. Whether or not they'll get like a mention or anything said about them when the actual issue releases, uh, we don't know that yet. This is for now just a little preview. And Kevin Feige kind of says there was a conversation with Amy Pascal about bringing, you know, classic Spider-Man villains into the MCU and how they originally set out for like Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home to focus on Vulture and Mysterio as they hadn't been done before, before they would dive into the villains that have already been done before. There was also talk about how Alfred Molina is like the only man that should play Doc Ock, how he's perfect for the role. I'm gonna say this, I think he is perfect in the role, I think he's a fantastic Doc Ock. But I don't think he's the only person in the world that can play the role. There's a lot of actors that I think could make potentially good takes on Doc Ock. And I think that's very much been proven by the Spider-Man PS4 game. But that's nothing against Alfred Molina's Doc Ock. I still think he does do an absolutely perfect job and does nail that role. And I am excited to see him again. But I think also they're talking about in the context of the multiverse. I, I mean, like, if you're going to do a multiverse story, you're not just going to have a random Doc Ock pop out. No, you want it to be one relevant to that multiverse storyline. So here we have the first image, and it's Tom Holland's Spider-Man in some very sci-fi looking room. I think that's the reactor room. I think that looks like uh, the room where Doc Ock might be building a new reactor. Whether or not Tom Holland's gone to the Raimi universe or maybe Doc Ock is building the reactor in the MCU, we don't know that yet. We don't even know that this is the reactor even. It doesn't reveal much. But um, still, a cool image. I'll be intrigued to see where Spidey is here. And then in the second image, we've got Spider-Man in his Iron Spider costume running from Doc Ock. Now, I'm really wondering kind of what the overall context of the Iron Spider in this movie is, because, like, we definitely appear to be getting the integrated suit, but this definitely appears to be a full render of his original Iron Spider, and it's kind of... It's no secret that Spider-Man is going to get an integrated suit which combines the Iron Spider with the upgraded suit. So I'm kind of intrigued to see how that will factor in. Maybe Doc Ock will destroy most of the Iron Spider's functionality. And it will be interesting to see like the Iron Spider's, you know, little spider pincer things at the back that are kind of like Doc Ock arms going up against Doc Ock, who could maybe rip them apart, and so maybe, you know, Spider-Man has to integrate the remains of his Iron Spider suit into his upgraded suit. But if he's in the multiverse, how many suits is he carrying with him? There's, there's a lot of questions here. But either way, it's kind of surreal seeing Doc Ock and Spider-Man sharing the same frame in the MCU Spider-Man. It's really exciting. Um, you can't really necessarily make out that it's Alfred Molina, because he's very much in the distance. But um, it, it's looking good. Other just little reports when it comes to Spider-Man No Way Home. The film is reportedly two and a half hours long. And uh, no comment, that's a trivial detail. It all depends entirely on how the film is paced and how they manage the time that they have. Like, I, I think it's ridiculous people saying, oh, that's not enough time, as if you know what's exactly in this story and how much time everything needs. Suddenly everyone's an expert, you know? And it's crazy, like, the film's duration is trivial. It entirely depends on the pacing. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, even that, you know, that's nearing three hours, like, so that's still not exactly a short movie. Um, then there's also that Doc Ock's tentacles will be entirely CGI in this one. There's not, they're not doing the puppetry route. Um, and it was revealed in an interview with Tom Holland. Now, in that regard, I don't really care. It depends entirely on execution again. Like, puppetry is always nice to see. It's always nice to see how integrated into the scene it actually looks. But CGI has come a long way since 2004. There are things they can do now with Doc Ock that they couldn't back in Spider-Man 2 in 2004. So, I'm, you know, as, as long as it looks good, as long as it makes proper use of it being a CGI thing, then, you know, it's all golden, you know? Like, I, I don't care. 
Like, you know, I, I always like things like puppetry and practical effects because it's actually there and you can see it and it's like you can see behind the scenes stuff. It makes it a whole lot more interesting. And I, I'd imagine making a film is more fun with practical effects than it is CGI. But like, you know, I, I'm not working close to the production or anything, so I, why should I care? You know, as long as it looks good, that's all that matters. I'm not going to be a film snob about it and be all anti-CGI because like when people say that it's lazy that they're doing CGI, no, it's not fucking lazy. Because a lot goes into CGI work. A lot goes into puppetry as well, but a lot goes into CGI work. It's it's really no more lazy to use CGI than it is to use practical. It just, it depends on whether or not it looks good on screen. And as long as it looks good on screen, which it does appear to in the trailer, then I'm happy. But that's all for today, Spidey fans. Just a quick update. And I will catch you elsewhere on the web. So what do you guys think? If you enjoyed this video and you want to support more like it, be sure to hit that big, beautiful subscribe button. And of course, in the description below are links to different social media feeds, including the Patreon. If you're feeling extra generous like the following people, who are David 20 Covers, JK Strife, Marcus Ward, Serious the Skeptic, Biotin Arts, Mr. SP, Sergio, George is Lost, Legendary Ray Ray, Adam Myers and Fayalan Schwarzenthal. Thank you guys, you are the best of the best, but as for the rest of you, thank you so much for watching guys, and have a great day.